Hey everybody, welcome back to TTWM, where we don't know what we're doing, but we try to do the best we can. So what we're talking about today is actually shortening your chainsaw chain. There's a few reasons why you'd want to do that, and I've got examples here. One is if your chain has stretched. So I've got this adjuster maxed out. You can see it's not going to be close. This guy, we're going to take a couple links out. This guy over here, just a chain that doesn't fit. This is a chain from a saw that I've got, uh, that I had, that I sold, but I kept some of the spare chains. Obviously you can see I've got a 12 inch bar here. This is a 16 inch chain. So we're gonna take a, several lengths out of this guy to make it fit. And then if you have a reel of chain, so you wanna make your own custom length chain. So you can just go in with the reel, count the number of lengths that you need and make your custom length. So stick around. Maybe we'll learn something together. Is we're actually going to shorten an Oregon chain. I'm going to shorten this Oregon chain because I don't have the chainsaw that it that uses this chain. I'm going to take a 16 inch chain and we're going to make it a 12 inch chain. Maybe about 12 links out of this chain. I've never done this before. I've got the the tools to do it. I just never have done it. So we're going to try it and see what happens. So what we'll do is we'll see how. Just a regular guy that doesn't do any chainsaw work much would do this. So the tools that we're going to use are going to be here, our chain breaker and our chain spinner. The chain breaker is what's going to actually take the rivets out. Then this chain spinner is what we're going to be using to put the rivets in. These are our tie straps, so they're going to be what we'll actually use to replace or to tie the, the ends of the chain back together. And of course, this is gonna be the chain that we're going to, to break. Right now, this 16 inch chain has 57 drive lengths. And what we're going to do is we're gonna reduce it down to 45 drive lengths. And whenever I say drive lengths, I'm talking about these guys here. So these folks here are going to be what we're going to be counting. How do you know how many drive links you need? All the information that you'll need is going to be on your bar typically. This bar has a little less information than what I like, but as you can see, possibly, it says that it's a 91-45. So that 91 is actually the Oregon chain number, but the 45, let's see, but the 45, is the number of drive links. So what we're going to do is we're going to count out 45 drive links and then we're going to go in and we're going to break two ends. So I've got this chain laid out on the bench and we can see here I've actually got a double link. It doesn't have a cutter at all in it. So I'm going to start cut, uh, counting from here. So I'm going to take this 57 drive link chain and I'm going to make it a 45 drive link. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna count the drive links here. I'm gonna mark it, obviously I've got the first cutter, or sorry, the first drive link marked. So that's gonna be our starting point. We're going to include the marked drive link in our count. And then we're just gonna to count to 45. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna wind up taking that small section of chain out and then just hooking the two ends together. So that way it'll be the, the right length, the right driver number count, all that. The reason why we're gonna do it here in this double link, uh, the double blank link, I guess, is because that way whenever, whatever side that I pick out here to cut, uh, to take out of the chain, we'll actually have a little bit better opportunity to match here so we won't have two cutters the same the same side like two rights or two left something like that or i won't try to put two cutters right back to back so let's go ahead and count those all right so we've got one two three four five six seven three forty four here is our 45th drive length so what we're going to do i'm going to mark that drive link here So that way that I'll know that we're going to cut out uh, on this side, actually this tie strap here. I'm gonna mark it with a little bit of an X so that I'll know to, that that tie strap comes out. 
and then this tie strap on the other side of the first drive link. We know that that one's going to come out. So basically we're going to cut out this section of chain here and then we will have a shorter chain. So stick around for that. All right, so now we're back over at our chain bench. So what I've got here, this is our chain breaker. This is the chain breaker, I guess, punch tool or, or bridge, I guess you would call it. The breaking block inside our chain breaker. We're going to find the first link that we had marked to break. So we're going to break this link here. And actually what we're going to do is we're going to break both sides, both of these rivets. And then we're going to break both of these rivets on this tie strap as well. So that way we'll actually have two ends now that we're going to join together. So to break it, all you do is set the chain in. Line up your punch in the center of the rivet. And then just press through. So you can see we broke the head out of that rivet. And then when we break this head, then the rivet will be gone. So you can see here what we've got. We've got these two links now. We've got the next section that we're going to break out and just repeat the process. We've got two pieces of chain. We've got the one piece of chain that is now 45 drive links. And then we've got the piece of chain that we broke out. We're ready to go ahead and do our spinning. There's a few things that we need. This is the chain spinner. Again, these are Tacomic. I bought them off of eBay. They're like $100 for the set, so pretty affordable. The nice thing about these are, it seems like I guess they are a copy of the Oregon set. So everything that works for the Oregon chain spinner and chain breaker works for this. Uh, the There's a couple pieces here on the chain spinner. This guy here is called the take up handle. Basically, this is what puts pressure. You're, you're gonna twist it as you spin your handle. So this is what actually crushes the rivet. And then there is an anvil, which is going to be what goes here in the front that goes actually on the spinner handle. So you're gonna spin this, spin, spin, spin. And then as you're spinning, you're going to twist this handle to be at the take up handle. So what we're going to do is there are different anvils that go in here for the different size chains. This guy here, because we're doing the 3 8 low pro is going to be the B anvil. So you can see it's marked here. So what we're going to do, it just pops in right here. If you have some room from the take up handle. It pops in to the spinner handle. Then the other pieces that we're going to need are going to be the, the preset. That's called the preset because it's got the rivets in it. And then this tie strap here. So there's a couple things to look out for. Hopefully you can see it. The preset has a flat side and then it's got a grooved side so or an indented side so what that is is the indent always goes down so we're going to make sure that we get that in the in the proper orientation and then same thing on the tie strap you might not be able to see this though it's the flat and the indent but there's also a dot on the tie strap there's a dot and then a blank side so the dot always goes to the outside so we're actually going to go ahead and spin our rivets so we can see that we have the two drive link ends that we cut out earlier so we're going to take our preset which is this guy here that has the rivets built into it 
we're going to make sure that it is placed into the chain appropriately. Remember it's got the flat going up and the indent going down. So that's in the two drive links there, the way that it should be. And then we are going to put the tie strap on. And again, remember it's got the flat side and the curved or indented side, as well as a dot on one side. So the dot goes to the outside. So they just go together just like this. So that's going to be what the assembled tie strap and rivet or sorry tie strap and preset looks like and obviously these are the rivets that we're going to go ahead and bring down with the rivet spinner so we're going to go ahead and get it set into the spinner itself i'm going to put pressure on it just to hold it to where that the chain is held there and we're going to make sure that everything is kind of held together so Oregon says that when you're spinning it, that you should um, that you should spin the first one halfway, then go to the second one, spin it all the way, and then go back and tackle the first one. So that's that's how we will tackle it. So what we're going to do is we're going to just start spinning. Let's make sure that everything is lined up well. So we're going to just start easing into the spinning motion and then putting pressure on it with the take up handle. And basically what we're doing by doing it halfway is we're just making sure that it's going to be held into place. So you can see that's about a half spun rivet there. This guy here, it's about half spun. So we're going to go ahead and move it to the next rivet, take some room out of the take up handle, put some pressure on it, and then just do the same thing. We're just going to start spinning. You can see that it kind of spins on itself some, so that's not a huge deal. We'll make sure that it loosens up to where that we can actually keep some movement in that joint. And then we're just gonna spin, spin, spin. So that's the first rivet that spun all the way down. We're gonna make sure that it's got articulation in the joint. So we're going to go ahead and put the first rivet back and finish spinning it up. So again, make sure that there's articulation in the joint which there seems to be. We've got good movement in there. That's what my spun rivets look like. So these two rivets here. So obviously it, it doesn't quite compare to Oregon's rivets, but they say to do the fingernail test, I can't get a fingernail stuck under it. So I'm gonna call it good. So you guys just leave comments in the video if you think that that's good, if you think it's bad, if you think it's super dangerous and I'll cut a leg off or something, if it'll, you know, if the chain will break, but that's pretty much, um, you know, as good as, as good of a first time as I could have expected or could have hoped for. So hopefully I can do that to my other three to five of these 16 inch chains and have a, have a whole load of 12 inch chains. Hopefully I will never have to buy another 12 inch chain. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great one.